This is now my all-time favorite food. Soup and luxion, chicken soup. And don't forget matzo balls. And matzo balls, right. And I have loved this since I was a baby. And I have to tell you just a little anecdote. When I was three or four years old, I was sitting and having a nice chicken soup at my aunt's house and crying. And my aunt asked me, Michaela, why are you crying? And I said, because it's so hot. And she said, so wait till it cools off. And I said, but I like it like this. <laughs> and ever since, I cannot eat chicken soup unless it's boiling hot. All right, Michaela, we'll give you boiling hot okay, chicken soup. Okay, so we're going to prepare now a traditional chicken soup. So what are our ingredients? Okay, the first thing we have are chicken bones. And I'm going to tell everyone a secret from the Second Avenue Deli, although I guess it's not a secret if I'm telling you. A lot of restaurants will use, or a lot of home cooks will use bouillon. We don't. We use the bones, and this gives an amazing, amazing flavor. It also gives the soup a lot of body. Um, you know, we have to have a soup with a nice body. How many chicken bones are we using? A now, pound and a half of chicken bones. I have some in the pot already. All right, so we again, we're bones. talking about six or eight Correct. portions. Correct. Okay. And you can, get, you can ask your butcher for some, or you could cut them away from chickens, when, you know, when it, like the backs, the necks, the giblets, things that you might take off, you can just cut them away. Put them in. And a marrow bone. And a, a marrow a, bone. Yes. A marrow bone. Oh, Love boy. sucking on those bones. Now, for people who don't eat red meat, we... Omit the marrow bone. Omit the marrow Yeah. Bones. Okay. All right. Now, so I'm putting this in, right? I already okay. have some bones in there, which okay. I put in cold water. All right? And the reason I put it into the cold water was because I wanted to extract as much flavor as possible. I'm going to put in the chicken also, but the chicken I'm going to put in warm water, in, hot, in boiling water. And the reason I'm doing that is because I want some flavor from the chicken, but I also want to leave some of the flavor inside the chicken so that we can have delicious chicken salad, boiled chicken. Um, so actually now the water is boiling. Okay. So gen and Actually, you know, this chicken's been sitting here a while and some massaging. Speaking of a chicken sitting for a while, that's good. You gave me the cue to my next Look at story. that. We work so well together. Oh, yeah. I didn't I, even know. Uh, I'm going to just massage the chicken while you Oh, you, you massage, talk. The, massage chicken. the chicken. Oh, it gets a, like a massage. Yes. So you have to massage it. Anyway, massage uh, the salt in. My yes. father used to tell a story about a lady who plucked her chicken, you know. In the old days, they used to take the chicken and you'd pluck it yourself. Right. This is not what a chicken looks like. Um, when it's freshly With, slaughtered, it and, has feathers. And you've tied the chicken up. I've tied up. it you've up. Tied it Not up. because I'm cruel or anything like that. I just want it to keep a nice shape. I want Alas, it to hold its shape. Poor Yarek. I knew him well. Um, so I put the whole chicken put in. Put the right? whole. Don't, don't throw well, it in, though, gently. You see, the story was that this lady took a chicken like this, plucked it, and put it in the oven, and left it there, and walked away. And about two hours later, she heard knocking from inside the oven. <gasps> She came back into the kitchen, opened the oven, and there was the chicken, and the chicken said in Yiddish, of course, lady, either give me back my feathers or warm up the oven, because I am freezing in here. Oh. So I'm going to put the entire, the whole chicken, chicken right just put, put in it right the pot. In. Very uh, nice, you did that did so I well. That? Now, why would you not cut up the chicken? Because it's going to fall apart. Right. I want to be able to take out the chicken. Okay. Um, this is a parsnip. One parsnip. Beautiful parsnip. Okay. And the parsnip, I know you like your chicken soup uh, sweet, right? See, I, exactly. Hot and sweet. Now, I come from the Polish Well, uh, parsnip tradition. is sweet. Mm -hmm. Okay, and some, you know, prefer carrots. their, uh, how many carrots? I put in two small carrots and one large, and I'm also throwing in some garlic. Okay. Um, I know the peel is on it, it doesn't matter because we're going to strain it. Two cloves of garlic. Two cloves of garlic. See, I love su everything sweet, like sweet gift mm. of the fish, sweet uh, soup. A sweet challah, because I come from the Polish, you know, Polish tradition. Um, I'm putting an onion. I know the peel is on. I didn't forget. I'm not being lazy. The peel will give it a nice golden color. So that's the reason. How for many? The peel. Well, one large or a couple small. You okay. know, nothing exact. And do you know what this is? Uh, Other than an ugly... I'm going to take a guess. It's a vegetable. Oh, you're very good. <laughs> this not is a bad. celery root. It is a celery root. And it has a nice, strong celery flavor. Okay. And to peel it, since it's so, it's, it's, you know, it's not perfectly round or anything like that, it's just easier to um, cut, the, uh, cut the, 
cut it off. Okay, so this is one celery root. One celery root. And I notice the pot now is filling up. It's almost gonna overflow. Do we remove some water? At some no, point? but I'll show you what we're gonna do. It's okay, because okay. water's gonna evaporate. All right. I'm putting in some whole peppercorns. All right, little peppercorns. About half a teaspoon of peppercorns. Right. A bay leaf, which we're going to fish out at the end when we strain the soup because you don't want to eat the bay leaf. We don't want to eat no. it. No. Just one bay leaf, that's it? One bay leaf. We'll smell this. Ooh, it's lovely. It's very flavorful. Yes, okay. And two little cloves. Two cloves. Two little cloves. Goodbye, little cloves. Goodbye. Now, what is that in the corner there? It's a turnip. I'm going to put that into. Right, because that I remember my mm -hmm. mom used to put turnips. And you don't cut the, you don't clean it? You don't, well, I, it's yeah, clean, it's, yes. These, these have all been pre -washed. Right, you don't have to. Okay. Um, and you might notice I'm not putting salt in, not because I have anything against salt, but this chicken soup's going to cook for like two hours. Right. And the, the flavor is going to concentrate, and if I put in salt now, it's going to get only saltier. Too salty. So okay. we will put the salt in at the very end. And right. the dill will be at the end, too. And we have dill at the end. Now, uh, wait, yeah. my mom also... Can you just, while you tell me this, can you just hand me that bowl? I sure and that's, can. Because while you're talking, I want to show you... Um, do you see all this stuff on top? Right. Okay. We are going to skim it. Okay. And I think only... somebody's coming to arrest me for putting that chicken in the way I did. Oh. Well, the chicken, it's not that the chicken was too cold. It's not looking for its feathers. Okay. All right. So I'm just so skimming, skimming off this, the top. this scum. It's, you know, little pieces of feathers that may have stuck to, that may have still been mm -hmm. on the chicken. Right. And some of the proteins and... It, this is this is the scum that just floats to the top and we want to get rid of because we want it to be a perfectly clear, clear ah, soup. I was going to ask you about that. How do you get the soup to, to stay clear and okay. not foggy? So one of them is, we'll only have to do this once or twice while it's cooking. While it's cooking, okay. Um, the, other, the other way we're going to get it cl very clear is by not boiling it. So actually when you said you like it boiling hot, that right. word wasn't 100% correct. Um, you like it very hot, but not boiling. Right. Because once this comes to a boil, we're going to let it simmer. Simmer means, if you think of boiling as hysterical laughter okay. on the surface of the water, boiling is like little giggles. Like giggles. 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 Yes. Giggles. So right. once the soup comes to a boil, we yeah. watch it and then we put it on a simmer. A simmer, just a low flame. And then so it remains little, simmering for a until couple it's of ready. hours. Okay. But when the chicken is ready, after an hour, we're going to take the chicken out so that we can have delicious chicken and let the bones still cook. Ah. Now, I'm going to give this to you. Okay. And we have some soup that was made. And. So this eventually. Let me will look like this. This will look like that. And let me just bring this over there to get okay. this out of the way. And we'll continue cooking it. How am I doing so far, by the way? Uh, this is going to be the best soup because you're, you're my helper. Thank you. Okay. Um, okay. Let me bring this over here. So we've got the, the soup itself. The soup itself. And we have also put in, we haven't actually. Oh, we but, didn't put in flanken right, here. Right, I was going to ask you about I that. I have flanken in this soup. Okay, because I love flanken, which oh, is. Oh, we have flanken, don't worry. Also called spondre sometimes, uh, Zuppenfleisch, and it's basically. Zuppenfleisch? Zuppenfleisch. Zuppenfleisch. You know, meat of the soup, but it's also known as short ribs, right? Right. If you purchase it, flanken, you're buying short ribs. short ribs. Okay, so you see, because the chicken was whole, we can get big pieces out. Right. All right, so let me just take out some of this chicken. And we can use that for chicken salad. We can have boiled chicken, soup chicken. We're going to use, you know, we can cut up pieces, put it in the soup. Now, because we had the chicken tied the way we did, it will not fall apart. Right. This okay. one was not tied. And there is the flunkin. Here is the flunkin. Right there. Mm. You know, my I mom know and like grandmother flunkin. also sometimes would put in a tomato Ooh. in the soup. She would sometimes put in celery and sugar. Sugar, really? Yeah. I have to try that. Because I loved sweet soup. Now we're going to strain this. Um, I have a ladle here. We're going to strain it. Okay. And now why are we straining it? Because we want to get any of the, we want to get any, we want it to be perfectly clear. We want any of the sediment out. Okay. And 
Let me get this out of the way and that out of the way. And I have some already strained soup. And, and at the very end, we also put some dill in. So I'll put the dill in here. It only has to be in there for like five minutes. I All tied right. it so we can just pull it right out. Okay. Okay. Why don't you bring me that mixing bowl? Here we go. I like having someone to boss around and ask to do things. That's my, that's what I'm here for. Okay. Here we go. All right. I need the eggs. All right. You could just dump that in the pot. The eggs in the? In the bowl. Don't, four eggs? Four eggs in four the bowl. Eggs. We are now making matzo balls. Matzo balls. Okay. okay. And can I have the schmaltz? The schmaltz. The schmaltz. Now. And we're going to make schmaltz. Schmaltzy matzo balls. Now. Pour it in there? You can use oil, but why would you? It's, I mean, we're, you're going to pour in a third of a cup of schmaltz. A third of, the, a third of a cup of schmaltz. It's schmaltz being? Chicken fat. Rendered chi chicken fat. Rendered chicken fat. And it is just, it, it, it's to die for. I think it's. But you could use heaven. oil if you want a little less yeah. schmaltzy. If you want it to be totally assimilated, use some oil. And that makes, that's the secret to fluffy. To flu well, no, this is the secret. That's one of the muscle. secrets. One That's of one of the secrets. Oil or schmaltz, but also the, the schmaltz gives it more flavor. Now, but I'm putting a, a tablespoon of baking powder in. One tablespoon of baking powder. Because, you know, there's also the two different um, styles of matzo balls. There are some who are addicted to hard What are you talking? I've got a, a cup and a third, a third, a one and a third cups of matzo meal, which is one ground up matzo. You could and just put in. that in. And there are those, like myself, who prefer fluffy matzo balls. Mm. So, you know, it's... Well, my father taught me something very important. He said that I once made matzo balls, which I threw in the garbage because they were really hard. I happen to like them hard, but most people don't. Why don't, don't. I help you with that? Well, may, I already I... have some already done. Oh, okay. And I need you to just wet your hands. Wet my hands. Wet your hands. And when I, he got very upset when I told him that I threw them away. He said, fry some onions, some garlic, and fry some onions and garlic. You know, wait, while, while I tell you the story, you're just going to take in the palm of your hand, right. your wet hand, and make little balls. Little balls. And put them in that pot of, of boiling water, well, and then we're going to let it simmer. OK, so I take like this much, you know? A little more. They're little going more. to expand. They will. Remember, there's, there's uh, baking pretty, powder in that there. That looks small to me. Well, look how much bigger they are in the pot. They will actually, they will actually expand. expand. Okay. He said, fry up some onions, some garlic, take the matzo ball, slice it, put it in the fried onions and garlic, and serve it as a side dish with the brisket, and nobody will know that it was a mistake. So I never admit to mistakes. I just How's recreate that? them. Well, it's a little tiny. Tiny? All right, I'll add a little more. We're having more. all this company for Shabbos, so okay. we want a little... Little more. Little more. Little more, okay. All right, and we're just going to put it in the, the water. Okay. And after each ball, if, if the water stops boiling, let it come back to a boil. Okay, so we already have some that have we already have some. And expanded. Would you, like, would you like some soup? I'd love some. So, so all right, let's just recap here. We have the chicken soup we've made, the matzo balls. You have already prepared the noodles, uh -huh. right? That's, and that's simply buying the noodles and boiling them, correct? Correct. So we have and the chicken soup. We have the matzo balls. We have the noodles. I put some of the. We have the short ribs or the flunkin. I put some of the flunkin in and, and now, some piece of chicken. This is the strained soup. This is the strained. See how clear it is? Oh, wow. Isn't that beautiful. <sighs> now, is this going to be sweet? <laughs> I'll anyway, tell you in a minute. Any <laughs> that's, that's not the way my family eats it. Okay. When, we, when, when I'm your sous chef, we'll make it sweet. Okay. All right? But All right. The, the parsnip will give it a little bit of a sweet flavor. All right. So okay. this is our chicken, chicken soup. Chicken soup. All right. And, mmm. Oh, is that good? Oh. Oh, excuse mm. me. Well, let me try the matzo ball. And let me just tell you that if you make it the day ahead, a day ahead of time, mm -hmm. you can stick it in the refrigerator and the fat will all rise to the top and we can just cut that right off. Refrigerator or freezer? Refrigerator. Refrigerator. Yes, as soon as it gets cold, it'll start to gel and that's how you know the bones gave it this nice body that it's starting to gel and we can just cut this fat right off. It's delicious. Enjoy. Mm.